Serbo-Croatian no longer exists. Having been acknowledged by this name for well over a century and spoken by some 16 or 17 million people, the language disappeared without trace when the state of Yugoslavia disappeared. It was replaced by four separate languages, Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, and more recently, Montenegrin. Of course, the inhabitants of those four countries didn't start speaking differently, but nationalist sentiment prohibits the idea of a single language with four or more dialects, or more accurately, a continuum, a continuum of language over the entire geopolitical area, and to some degree across its borders, permitting mutual intelligibility. Thus, a listener's comment on a BBC website recently can claim, in defiance of linguistic history, that these new languages, quote, have separate histor histories, developments, origins, and most importantly, identities. Even though they can be mutually understood by its speakers, they are not and cannot be one language. The term Serbo-Croatian is a communistic fantasy language which existed only on paper. So feelings run high about language in this part of the world. I start with this example because it makes the political basis of what we call natural languages strikingly clear. And a similar picture could be drawn by looking at actual language use in many parts of the globe. Whatever the origin, and it's disputed, of the saying, a language is a dialect with an army and navy, it captures nicely the political and hegemonic determination of those systems of speech we unthinkingly call languages. Enshrined in the doxa and operative in many scientific spheres is the view that the domain of language, le langage in Saussure's classification, consists of distinct named languages, les langues, as the unmarked natural entities, and that there are subsidiary and often less prestigious variants that can't be classified in this way and are marked as dialects. 